Hi, and welcome to another episode of In Craig's Corner. I'd like to start off by uh, looking at the readings for the ninth Sunday of Ordinary Time in the Roman Catholic Liturgy. These come to us today from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, and I'm going to kind of read the, uh, the sections out of uh, Gospel uh, chapter 7, verses 21 through 27. Again, I'm going to be using the New American Bible. This is, the again, the translation used at Holy Mass in English-speaking countries. And we start off under the heading of the true discipleship. And this is kind of the theme for uh, this Sunday's readings. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive demons out in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and the buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. Again, this is from the New American Bible. Um, I like the New American Bible because it has a, a nice translation to it, but um, there are other... Uh, varieties of, of Catholic scripture that you can use. Uh, but looking at Jesus' testimony today as to what it consists of the true disciple, there's two distinct messages, I believe, that come out here. Uh, the very first is, uh, what happens when somebody follows the law without taking it to heart? And the other is, what is somebody who hears the law but does not uh, obey it. Uh, the first part being that uh, Jesus talks about how the he, he points at the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees as prime examples of this, that they follow the letter of the law, they follow it to a T, and yet those are exactly the type of people who are not going to be saved at the end of the times. Uh, he says that they will come to him saying, didn't we preach in your name? Didn't we drive out demons? Didn't we uh, do this? Didn't we do that? And he's going to say, yeah, he did all that. But what did it say in here? What, what did your heart say whenever you were doing these things? Sure, you gave money to charity, but you did it so you could write off uh, something in your taxes. You know? Sure, you gave away some clothes, but it wasn't because you wanted to give to people. It's because you didn't want them. You wanted to get new clothing. You know, there are, there are a lot of uh, things in our lives that uh, we may be tempted to say that we're doing something uh, in, uh, but by using the Bible as a justification, by using our faith as a justification. But you know, this this is very empty and not indicative of what a life of Christ should be. Also, I mentioned that, um, you know, perhaps uh, we're talking about somebody who hears the Word of God but decides not to listen to it. Uh, a lot of times uh, we get sucked into the uh, idea of cafeteria Catholicism, in which we go along and we get to pick up uh, the beliefs of the church that we want, put them on a tray, and the beliefs that we don't want, we just kind of either you know, walk past them or discard them. The uh, Catholic Church has a set uh, uh, group of beliefs. It's creed. Uh, it's explained very well in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. You can find copies of it online just about anywhere. Um, if you know something to be wrong, if you know something to be uh, problematic uh, in, your, in your belief system, in your faith, you owe it to yourself to find out what's causing those feelings, what's causing that problem. Um, if 
something you're doing is a sin and you know that it's wrong and you know that it's a, a bad thing to do, you have to do the right thing and turn your life around. You, you're full of this wisdom and insight of how Christ wants you to live your life. So do it. It's, it's really that simple. But because we need help getting to that point, that's what we have Christ's representatives for, uh, for us, the priests, uh, those, uh, those spiritual directors that help us each day um, continue to walk down that road of Christ. A lot of times uh, people will hear something and say, oh, I don't really agree with that. Um, I know that the church teaches this, but that's something that I'm not really uh, at liberty to believe. Each time that one of us makes that decision in our life, that uh, something out there that the church teaches is something we don't believe, we need to examine our conscience and we need to examine our, our thought pattern to uh, really establish why we think that way. Um, if, we, if we don't do that, we, we risk not only jeopardizing our soul, but jeopardizing those around us. Because sin is something that doesn't just permeate through our being, but it, it hurts others as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a really serious issue that, uh, that bears taking in some thought. So, you know, just reflecting on Jesus' words, what are the things that we could get better at in terms of following Christ appropriately? What are the kinds of sins that we can turn away from in our daily lives uh, and replace it with something God-centered. Uh, you know, instead of uh, getting, you know, th there's just a whole host of sins out there. I don't really want to narrow it down to a certain thing, but um, but the best thing that you can always do when you're facing yourself in a very difficult situation uh, is to turn for help from a friend, turn to help uh, from your pastor. They're always willing to talk to you, and uh, and remember that. When you have God in your back pocket, nothing can go wrong. The message again for the ninth Sunday of Ordinary Times, true discipleship. What can we do each day to allow ourselves to grow closer to Christ? Uh, with that, uh, this has been another episode of In Craig's Corner. I uh, thank you for listening, and I hope that it's uh, been as much of a pleasure for you as it has been for me. Thanks, and goodbye.